Hey guys, so this is gonna be a quick video showing you how to create a parallax effect. Now, if you already know what a parallax effect is, stick around because you're gonna learn something different. I like to think of a parallax effect as in when the worlds are upside down like Inception like you see right here. But I wanna show you a few more advanced techniques like you're about to see. So that's pretty awesome guys. As you can see, we are able to manipulate the footage to our own desire and preference and it's really awesome because I'm going to show you how to also create this effect right here at the end where the bottom is moving towards you and the top is moving away from you. It's actually fairly simple. So one thing to note is that this parallax effect will not work with every shot. You know, you want to have a solid, clear sky like you can see right here, if I make this a little bit bigger. But the main thing is being able to give yourself some room to play. So I shot this in 4K, and I would be able to rescale this all the way up to 100% without losing any quality. So before we get started, I have paired up with Jord Watches, and they are hosting a giveaway. All you have to do is check out the link in the description below if you are interested in handmade wooden watches. These are great quality watches, and I have not stopped wearing mine since. So now that we have a clip to work with, keeping in mind that we want the sky to be a neutral color or something that gives us room to work with like the sky you see right here. All you have to do is simply rescale this footage down a little bit. Notice how my scale is already 50%. That is because I'm using 4K footage on a 1080p timeline. So I'm gonna scale this down even more, probably to about 30%. And let's drag this down to the very bottom of our frame so we get something like this. A cool little trick is going to be hitting this plus sign and then clicking and dragging the safe margins down here and just clicking OK so that we can enable that to see where we're working with so that this is the middle of our frame both vertical and horizontal. So we want this bottom footage to be close to the middle but up overlaying a little bit, just like so. So now what I want to do is hold Alt on our keyboard and drag to the top of the clip. If you're on a Mac, you're going to hold Option, and then click on that top video layer and simply change the Y position over in the Effects Controls tab to drag it all the way to the top just like so. Now that they're overlaid, we want to make sure our top video layer is selected and change the rotation to 180 degrees. That'll create this little effect. If we lower the opacity just a little bit, you can see that these videos are overlaying right about here. Make sure that opacity is 100% and let's move on to the next step. With our top video layer selected, we're going to click on this create a four point polygon mask. You'll notice that it masked out an area on our video and all we want to do is drag this down to this line right here. This line represents the end of our top video layer. So what I want to do is drag that to the middle and keep in mind this line right here, which is on our bottom video layer. So now what we're going to do is drag these corners out to the right. You can click on the corner and drag it around, but if you hold shift, it'll constrain those proportions horizontally, which is what we want to do. Now click on the bottom one, start dragging, and then hold shift and drag it out to here. As you can see, we have this mask on the edge of our video. All we want to do is click on inverted under the properties over here and simply increase the mask feather until we get to that edge of the video or start to see a line. So now you can see that we start to see this line a little bit around 750, but let's back off a little bit because we don't even want to come close to that. So that looks about good around 396, so I'm going to make that 350 just to be safe. So as you can see, if we play back through this, it might be a little jittery because we're using 4K footage twice scaled as well. So I'm simply going to click on any of these videos and click X, which will basically set an in point right here and an out point right there. Or I can click I to set an endpoint and O to set an out point. But I think X works faster and go to sequence 
render in to out. This will pretty much render a video preview so we can see this without any lag at the full resolution. So as you can see, it looks great. We have the parallax effect going on. And you can simply click this safe margins button if you want to get rid of those as well. Now, you might be wondering how you get this parallax effect to be zoomed in like the other one. You would say change the scale, but there's actually an easier way. Highlight both of these video layers and right click and go to nest. You can name that whatever you want, but I just keep them nested sequences. Now click on your nested video layer and simply upscale it to about 150% or so, so that it looks like this. So now our video layer is zoomed in. And like I said before, you might want to lower the resolution a little bit so you don't get so much lag if you're working with 4K footage. One big thing is, is that we can go into this nested layer and manipulate this footage to our own desire and preference. More specifically, if I wanted to make the top layer look like it was going away from me, I would simply right click on this video Video, go to speed and duration and click reverse speed so what happens now is we basically have these video layers that are going opposite of each other so you can create some interesting effects using this terminology so let's jump back on into the nested sequence right here and this is where we have some room to play we can simply scroll up and down on our Y axis, but we don't have so much room on our X axis right here. So what we want to do if we wanted to create that circular effect that I had earlier is start keyframing some motion. Now this motion will be created by going to the effects tab and typing in transform and dragging on the video effects distort transform effect onto our nested sequence. Now under the transform tab, we want to uncheck the use composition shutter angle because we want motion blur to be happening and change that shutter angle to about 125. You can mess around with that number anywhere from zero to 360 to get different types of motion blur. So what we want to do now is keyframe the very beginning scale and position and potentially the rotation. So we can see that that goes like that. And then right about here is when I want them to start keyframing into that rotation effect that we had earlier. So I'm going to check this button right here to add another keyframe on all of those. And I'm going to just scroll forward a little bit till I feel it is good. And just like that, I'm going to change the rotation by dragging this thing to a little bit beyond where I want it to go. So a hundred and negative 105 degrees. So then you want to go a little bit beyond where your keyframe is and set another keyframe to negative 90 degrees so that it is completely vertical. And now that it's vertical, we're noticing that our zoom isn't right. So what we're going to do is go back to our keyframe right here where the rotation is happening and zoom in just a little bit till we don't see those black lines. And then we're going to go to the very end one and we can potentially keep at 126 or we can go back out a little bit till we don't see those black lines. And then what we're going to do is simply use the arrow keys to scrub through this and see if we see black lines. You'll notice that we see some black lines right here. So maybe we actually have to zoom this in a little bit more. So go to our first zoom and change this to about 150. This will be a lot of trial and error to figure it out for you guys. But scrubbing through this right here, we can see a little bit right down here in the edge and it's so minute that I might even adjust the starting zoom to something like 105. As you can see, when it goes to these keyframes at the rotation, it's a very harsh duration back. So we want to drag these out a little bit and simply highlight both of the rotation and scale keyframes, right click and click on Bezier. This will smooth out that transition coming into these keyframes right here. As well, you'll notice that this line coming in is a harsh stop right there. So highlight both of those, right click and click on ease in. That'll smooth out that transition even more. So if I render out this sequence from the keyframes, click O on the keyboard, because I just want the first part, and then go to sequence, render into out, and let that render, you guys will be able to see what I just created. So now let's play back through this, paying attention to our keyframes right here. The transition is happening and right here is when the Bezier should slow it down. 
So the bezier slows it down and it comes back to the center. It is very smooth and looks pretty cool. To create the zoom that I did earlier, all you have to do is add a keyframe for the scale and rotation and then go forward a little bit and make this zoom probably about, I don't know, 200. I want the zoom to happen fast. I want it to happen even faster. While it's zooming in, I'm going to have the rotation go to negative 90 to zero. So it's zooming in and turning. As you can see, we're getting some motion blur right here and that is changeable by the shutter angle. If I make it 360, we're going to get a ridiculous amount of motion blur. If I make it zero, we will get no motion blur. So I think a good solid standpoint is 125 degrees. Notice we're zooming in to the right. So I'm gonna continue to zoom out for the rest of this clip. So I'm gonna continue moving the rotation to the right. So I'll probably make this 360 degrees. Drag that out a little bit and then I'm going to change the scale to um, around 100. So you'll notice all of these keyframes were Bezier. So we want to manipulate these to our own desired preference. So right click and click on linear for all of them so that it just happens how we want them to. So this linear keyframe, it zooms in pretty fast, just like how I want it. I want it to all be continuous, um, but I want to change these ending keyframes to ease in. So now if we look at this, you can see that this is how I created that circle zoom effect in the beginning that you just saw. So that looks pretty similar to what I had earlier. You'll notice that the farther I get out, I have a chance of getting these black lines like you just saw right there. So you have to keep that in mind for when you're making this transition yourself. I had so much fun making this tutorial and hopefully you guys learned something. But for now, you guys know the drill. I'll see you next time.